there, my name is Sarah, and as I mentioned in my last video, I'll be doing a four-part series on the different ways to warp images in Clip Studio Paint. This first one is about the new feature released with CSP version 4.0, Puppet Warp. Here's my little example character. Go to Edit, Transform, and choose Puppet Warp. A mesh appears over the character. To set up a puppet warp, you add pins to different parts of the mesh by left-clicking, like so. Think of these like pinning rubber bands to a board. If you move a pin by clicking and dragging it, your image will be stretched away from the nearest other pins. You can set up pins at each of a character's joints by continuing to click around the mesh. The order you set them up in doesn't matter. You may have noticed that the most recent pin you place turns orange and has a ring around it. This is your active pin. Click and drag the center of the pin to move it. Hover within the circle until you see this icon, then click and drag to rotate the pin in place instead. If you place a pin by mistake, delete it by holding down the Alt key and left-clicking the pin again. You can also go over to the Tool Property palette and, next to Click Pin, change this drop-down to Delete Pin. Then any pins you click will be deleted instead of selected. Be sure to change it back to Select Pin when you're done. There are a few ways to select multiple pins. For one, you can hold down the Shift key and click each pin. They'll turn orange to indicate the selection. Notice you also lose the ability to rotate them. However, you can move multiple pins at a time. Another way to multi-select is to click somewhere outside of the mesh and start dragging. A selection box will appear, and any pins within it when you release the mouse will be selected. The last way is to use the options in the tool properties next to Select Pins. By default, each click will select the new pin while deselecting any others, but you can also change it to each click adding to the selection, each click subtracting from the selection, or each click toggling the selection. I prefer the first and just using Shift to multi-select, but you might find options like the toggle handy if you're on a tablet instead of a keyboard. Move your pins as you like, adjusting the rotation if you need to. When you're happy with your image, go ahead and click OK to finalize the puppet work. The pins and mesh disappear when you're done. So now let's go over some tips for using this tool. Tip 1. Puppet Warp is a destructive edit. So what does that mean? Well, any edit you make with this tool permanently changes your pixels. For example, if I move my character's arm over their face and hit OK, the pixels of the arm and face are now merged. Starting a new Puppet Warp won't differentiate where the separate arm and head used to be. Tip 2. Duplicate your layer first. If you want to keep the original image for any reason, it's a good idea to just duplicate it before you use Puppet Warp on your art. Right-click on the layer, and select Duplicate Layer. You can then hide the layer so it's out of the way in case you need to revert back to it. There is this option here to keep the original image, but it keeps it on the same layer, which might not be what you want. Tip 3. Multiple layers. If your character, or whatever you're warping, is split up into multiple layers, you can select all of the layers, or a folder containing them all, and start a puppet warp on the whole thing at once. The mesh is applied over all selected layers as though they were a single image. Now, say I move the hand over the face again, and hit Apply. The arm is still a separate layer, so I can still work with it independently. Tip 4. Deleting a pin removes its effect. If you've made adjustments using a puppet warp, but then decide to delete a pin, be aware that any part of the image affected by that pin will snap back as though it never existed. Tip 5. Expand the mesh. If your warp isn't behaving like you expect, especially for thin lines, try expanding the mesh. 
The pins you place are actually affecting this mesh, which in turn affects the image underneath, so expanding it out allows more points of reference to make nice curves on thin objects. Tip 6. Warping within selections. Go to the Selection Area tool and choose the Lasso subtool. Click and drag around a part of your art to select it. Start a puppet warp. The mesh will be limited to this area, and your selection will constrict to match. The selection even adapts as you make changes using your pins. Tip 7. Think outside the box. One last tip is simply this. We hear puppet warp and immediately think about using it on a character, but how else might it be used? I thought of warping a curtain to appear like it was fluttering or a tree bending in the wind. It's quite an interesting addition to the tools in Clip Studio Paint. What do you think? Have you come up with any unique ways to use the new Puppet Warp feature? Stay tuned for the next tutorial in the series where I'll go over the Liquify tool, one of my favorites. See you in the next one. Bye! A big thank you to all of my patrons, with a special shout out to Novatier patron Joe C. Phipps. Check out my Patreon if you'd like to help support future content like this.